Okay, we're going to be going over how to put an overgrip on. Uh, doing a replacement grip is the exact same except for you would do it at the very base layer and you'd use a staple at the bottom. Um, other than that, it, it's identical. You're going to have adhesive on a replacement grip all the way up the grip, so it's kind of important that you get it set right. Um, but beyond that, it's, it's the same. Also, just w when I say the base layer, I mean the base layer. That, do that doesn't mean with sticky residue and uh, leftover replacement grip uh, from the last one that you're replacing. You, you need to clean it up. You need to take all that residue off, the, the adhesive. Sometimes there's a sticky backing. Um, if you're using Yonix grips, there's this awful cotton. Just get rid of all of it. You have to be on the base layer and have it nice and clean. Otherwise, the replacement grip's not going to hold as well. Uh, but other than that, putting it on is the same as putting on an overgrip. So I'm just going to show you how to do an overgrip real quick. Um, most overgrips should come with finishing tape. Hang on to that. We'll use that in a minute. Anytime you have an overgrip that has a cover like this, it's clear. Oh, that didn't work very well. Bear with me here. I'm trying to get this plastic cover off. Anyway, like I was saying, anytime you've got a plastic cover on a overgrip, that's going to be your outside. That's what you're going to touch. Just so make sure that the opposite side is what's going on the bottom. Um, for some grips, it really doesn't matter because it feels the same on both sides, but for most grips, it, it does. But most overgrips, with exception to Turner Grip and maybe a few others, should come with an adhesive starting part. You just take the, the backing off and now you've got a little sticky piece. Uh, that's going to help hold the overgrip in place while you're stretching it over the butt cap. But that being said, that's where you want to start. You want to start at the butt cap. You want to put it on one of the bevels. I'm going to put it where I had it last time. Stick it right there. You want it flush up against with the bottom of the butt cap, flush to a sixteenth of an inch. You don't want it overhanging and you don't want it real short. Um, I put mine flush. You put it flush up against and then pulling on it just a little bit, just, just a little bit of pressure. Some take a little more than others, especially turner grip that takes quite a bit. You're going to want to pull it across, spin it around, okay, keeping it flush. Okay, now the pulling, the pressure, keeps you from getting bubbles. If you don't put a little bit of pressure, you're going to get a little bit of bubbling, and that's bad. I mean, that's, you're going to feel that under your hand, and you're going to get a blister. But after you get past so far, what you want to do is start paying attention to your overlay. You only want just a little bit, an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch. Now, depending on what you like, you may like more, you may like less. But the idea is to be consistent throughout the, the grip. If you do a sixteenth of an inch, keep doing a sixteenth of an inch. Okay, just keep going around and around. Uh, also, one thing to note is that if you are a right-hander, this is the direction in which you put on the grip. If you're a left-hander, you're going to want to spin it the other way. It all has to do with the way your fingers lay across the grip. Unless you use a hammer grip style, you're probably going to feel a left-handed grip if you're right-handed and a right-handed grip if you're left-handed, just because the grooves go in a... In a direction that's contradictory to what the way your fingers lay across the grip. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, I got home and I realized that I didn't show you what I planned on showing you, um, and that was how right-handed and left-handed affects the grip. Um, you can do this at home with your racket. It's probably grip for a right-hander. Uh, they usually are when you get them stock. Um, then people just put them on the way that they were on. But, uh, but anyway, when, when you see, when you're looking at a rack, you can see that they're kind of slanted, these, uh, these grooves here that you've made when you're uh, doing your grip. And the reason this is for right-handers is because if I were to hold the grip, I mean, in any style, continental or, or western, your fingers aren't straight across. They're at an angle, and that matches the grip. 
just to show you. I, I hope you can see that, uh, that your fingers go at the angle of the grip tape. Now, if you were left-handed and you held it, it would go against that. And that's why it's important to wrap it the other way for left-handers. And a lot of left-handers don't notice and or care. Um, but it is it is there. It is kind of important to people. So it, it is important to ask if you're gripping somebody's racket. Um, and again, just as I mentioned earlier, if you have a hammer style, uh, which I kind of hit my backhands like a little bit, where you just, I mean, you're not really flared out like that. It really doesn't matter. It's going to feel, you know, you're going to feel the, the grip grooves either way just because you can't just wrap around evenly with a, with a grip, so. So there's that. I should just want to keep wrapping. After you get off the butt cap, you really don't have to stretch that much. In fact, it's better if you don't, just for the life of the grip. But once you get to the top here, you're gonna to want to start stretching again. Anytime that you have a change in the width of the grip, like at the bottom and the top, you're gonna to want to start stretching because that's gonna get rid of any kind of bubbles that you'll have. And you, you really don't want bubbles. It just it doesn't look good and it's bad for your hands and pretty much bad all around. But once you get down to the top, keep going. Don't don't just you know wrap it all the way around like that. Keep going. Just keep going like like you still have some grip left, overlapping the same amount until you can't see the finishing tape from your replacement grip. Okay, I like to go a little bit further just to hold it. But what you're going to do is you're going to mark where that replacement grip is. Now you can tell where it is by feeling it. Sometimes you can see it. Um, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but I can see it. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to get just a little marker and mark a few spots where that replacement grip is. Go all the way around marking where it is. Now you can draw a line. Um, some people like to use a razor and they'll score it. Uh, the idea is just mark it so that you can see it when you take it off. And now that I've marked it, I'm going to back it up a little. Okay. Now that I've backed it up, you can see that straight line. That's the line that you're going to cut on so that you have a nice flush finish. Let me grab the scissor. You just take the scissors and cut along that line. I like to cut just a little under it so that I'm not getting any of those marks on the grip for people to see. Okay, now that you've got a, an end here, you wrap it around. Back it up a little bit. Okay. Now that you've got it nice, even finish, you're going to take your replacement grip, or your uh, finishing tape, sorry. Take your finishing tape and wrap it in the same direction that the grip is going. That means I want to take it here and wrap it this way. I don't want to put it and wrap it that way because that's going against the grip. If you put it this way, you're guaranteed to maintain the tautness of the grip right here. So anyway, you put it on the end. Take the rest of the finishing tape, the backing off. This is another part where you're going to want to pull a little bit. Pull as you wrap. What it does is it stretches the finishing tape, makes it contour to the little edges that you've got. Okay. Just keep pulling. Now you can also use electrical tape if you're uh, if you've got some overgrips and you've lost this. You can use electrical tape. It's the same thing. Just make sure you get something that doesn't have a glossy finish. That glossy finish is kind of distracting. But once you get down so far, what you want to do is cut the finishing tape at an angle. That angle helps the finishing tape stay on. Just stretch it over, keep it in place, and there you go. That is a what they call a factory grip job. Um, you may prefer it in a whole host of different ways. I've been in the industry long enough to see every single way to do it, um, from one grip on the bottom to another grip on the top to some kind of spiral pattern of turn a grip and pro over grip. I, I've seen it all. Um, this is just how the USRSA says to do it. This is a what they call a factory grip job. Looks nice. Looks clean. Comes all the way down, all the way to the top. Finished nice. It's just very, very clean and professional looking. And this is how you would expect to get it if you took it to a, a professional uh, racket technician or if you got it.